Hi, welcome to this tutorial about robust correlation with R. It is well known that the Pearson correlation is not robust when it comes to outliers. And in this tutorial I will show you four alternatives to the Pearson correlation and how you can use them in R. First, let's look at the data. As we see here, we have a somewhat negative relationship between the x and the y variable. However, we have two outliers. Let's see what we get if we run a Pearson correlation for this. The result, not a significant correlation, and the correlation coefficient is very near zero. As a comparison, if I throw out the two outliers, let's see what the Pearson correlation would be then. Now we get a highly significant correlation, and the correlation with minus 0.44 is nearly a strong effect. So those two outliers have totally changed the result. Therefore it makes sense to always use, in addition to a Pearson correlation, some robust correlation to make sure that our results are not distorted by outliers. There are two classical robust correlations, Spearman and Kendall. Let's start with Spearman's row. We get a warning message. We always get if we have ties. That's not that big a problem. Here are the results. We have a significant correlation. And here is our Spearman's row. The same with Kendall's tau. The p-value is similar. Kendall's tau is almost always smaller than Spearman's row. So both robust methods are not fooled by the two outliers, but get us the correct result that we have a negative correlation between those two variables. Then there are modern robust correlations. For those we need the library WRS2. If you haven't used that yet, you have to install it once, of course. I have installed it, so I just load it with the library command. The first one is the percentage band correlation. In the description of this video, I put a link to a journal article explaining this technique. Here is our robust correlation coefficient, and here is the p-value. So again, with this technique, we get a correct result that we have a negative correlation. The second modern robust correlation coefficient is the Windsorized correlation, in which the most extreme values are reduced to values less extreme. And here we get similar results. It's significant, but just barely significant. And the correlation coefficient is quite similar. So all four robust methods correctly identified the negative relationship between those two variables. Finally, I would like to look at the clean data set. Because if we use robust methods, it's not enough that they can handle violations of the assumptions. They should give correct results as well in situations when there is no violation of any assumption. So now we run all those tests with a clean data set where those two outliers have been deleted. So this was Pearson's correlation with a clean data set, significant and giving a correlation coefficient of minus 0.44. Spearman's row is significant with a row of minus 0.41. Kendall's tau is significant with Kendall's tau minus 0.29. The percentage band correlation is significant with a correlation coefficient of minus 0.37. And the Windsorized correlation is significant with a correlation of minus 0.34. So which of those techniques should you use? Unfortunately, I found very little in the literature to give you guidance on that. And based on the results of this sample, I would use Spearman or the percentage band correlation. However, for a different sample, it could change. So basically, the most important recommendation is use any of those. Don't just use Pearson's correlation. Use Always use one of those four methods in addition to that to make sure that Pearson's correlation doesn't give you false results because of outliers. That's it for robust correlation with R. You'll find the R code on the companion webpage to this tutorial. The link is in the description. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just click on the subscribe button below this video. Thank you so much for watching.